All right, where is my little preamble? So, I'll move it over here so it's easier and I can see you. All right, welcome to the beginning of the new campaign in the world of Eberron. <clears throat> Every child knows the story of the progenitor dragons, Sybaris, Eberron, and Kyber. In the dawn of time, these three cosmic beings created 13 planes of existence, each embodying a concept. Their final work was the material plane, where all ideas would, be would become manifest. A realm that could know war and peace, life and death, order and chaos. But cruel Kyber sought ultimate dominion over this new reality. They struck Sybaris without warning and tore them apart. Eberron wrestled with Kyber and bound the traitor in their coils, but could not defeat them. So Eberron became a living person, a uh, living prison, sorry. A world that would forever contain Kyber's evil. Almost every culture in the world shares this story as a myth that explains the world around them. Shattered Sybaris became the ring of golden dragon shards wrapped around the planet, said to be the source of magic and creation. Eberron, the world, the source of all natural life, and Kyber, the Underdark, the world below. The source of aberrations and fiends forever struggling against their bonds and yearning to destroy the world above. Another tale shared across cultures describes one more conflict that occurred in the first age of the world. Long ago, powerful arc fiends known as the Overlords and their armies of Rakshasa and lesser fiends dominated Eberron. Forces of Light, some versions of the story say the Nine Gods of the Sovereign Host, others say an alliance of dragons and celestials, eventually defeated the Overlords. But these fiends couldn't be destroyed, instead their immortal essences were bound in Kyber. Over the course of millennia, numerous civilizations rose only to fall. Giants built mighty kingdoms on the continent of Zendrik that were devastated by a war with the dragons of Ar Argonacesson. The Goblin Empire of Dakan ruled Corvair until its reign was shattered by an invading army of mind flayers, beholders, and the foul creatures that created them. Today, these civilizations are only known through the remnants left behind. In the modern age, the greatest power of the ki sorry the greatest power of the kingdom was the kingdom Galifar, which covered most of the continent of Corvair. The five nations Oendir, Breland, Carnath, Thrain, and Sire formed the heart of the kingdom. Although each has a unique cultural identity, they share this unified foundation. A century ago, Galifar collapsed into civil war. The five nations became separate countries at odds with their neighbours. The last war came to an end after Sire was destroyed in the cataclysm known as the Morning. The five nations remain divided today, sharing Corvair with new nations established by the Treaty of the Thronehold. The remaining five nations remain the largest and most powerful countries in Corvair. The war is over, and the nations of Corvair now try to build a new age of peace and prosperity. Ancient threats linger, however, and the world needs heroes to take up the cause. Nations compete on many levels over economic dominance, political influence, territory, magical power and more, each looking to maintain or improve its status by any means short of an all-out war. Dragon-marked houses, Churches, both pure and corrupt, crime lords, monster gangs, psychonic, uh, psionic and psychotic spies, arcane universities, secret societies, sinister masterminds, dragons, and a multitude of organizations and factions join the struggle for position and power in the aftermath of the last war. The technology of Eberron has developed not through the advances of science, but the mastery of magic. The widespread use of magic pervades life in cities and towns. Airships and rail transport make rapid travel across the con make rapid travel across the continent possible. A working class of minor mages called Magerites use spells to provide energy and other necessities. Advances in magic item creation have led 
to everything from self-propelled farming implements to sentient, free-willed beings created in Artificer's Forges. With the aid of rare crystals called Dragon Shards, Dragon Marks can be made more powerful, elements can be controlled and harnessed, and magic items can be crafted and shaped. Although Eberron is a vast world with many continents and cultures, your adventure begins in the land of Corvair, more specifically in Eastern Brayland. Near the end of the last war, the nation's sire was demolished by a cataclysmic event known as the Day of Mourning. What remains of sire is now called the Mournland. It is said that only the foolhardy and desperate venture into that place. An outpost called Vatheront has sprung up on the fringe of the Moorland. Vatheront is populated by scavengers, prospectors, and any hoping to make money by looting valuable items from Sire's smoking remains. An area they call the Grey. Scavengers join together to form salvage crews that brave the unpredictable and often deadly land, uh, and often deadly landscape of the Mornland of value and then getting out before its lingering magic of the cataclysm destroys them. Some work for patrons, other work for salvage brokers, and others work for themselves. Survival in salvation, uh, sorry, survival in Vathrond requires quick wits, a strong constitution, and a friend watching your back. We start our adventure not in the hot, arid climate around Vathrond, but in the cool interior of a lightning rail of House Orion. As you look out the window, you see the, the sands around uh, Eastern Brayland whizzing past, uh, and there's not much rumble and not much vibration in this carriage, as it is adorned with ornaments and fancy calligraphy around the edges, at, a very nice first-class experience. You see an autonome, small mechanical being hooked up to the center of the uh, train passageway. You've got seats on either side, and it, it, it almost flies down the middle, serving left and right. But there are no patrons on this first-class carriage except for two. As the autonome <laughs> comes to a stop and goes, Hello, passengers of House Orion, Lightning Rail. We're about to arrive in Vatheront. As it switches to a pre-recorded message. Please finish up your drinks, and you will be escorted off the, the train when you arrive at the platform. Arrive to destination five minutes. Uh, Dale and Ian, could you please describe your two characters uh, sitting in the booth? Go for it. Um, so I suppose you would be sitting there, a dark-coloured um, tabaxi, wearing sort of like a, just a cloth, sort of, almost like a robe, but just the top half and these like just normal cloth pants on the bottom. Um, very sort of dark in colours though, like a black top, like dark purple pants, um, and as the automatron is mentioning that we're about to sort of arrive, knowing that it's going to be quite warm and sort of sandy outside, I'll sort of pull like a little headdress up to just past my ears and start putting like a little mask across the bottom half of my face. Not like a mask, like a little okay. veil sort of thing. And then you would be carrying a little dagger on one side and a sort of like a satchel with not necessarily a book as such, but like lots and lots of little sections of paper that are like bound together and sort of tied up into little makeshift books it's all essentially one big book um and she would have a sort of long curved strange looking stick with a little y at the end a little cigarette sitting with the y sick 
Nice. And uh, for for sake of you already know each other, what is the name of your character? Uh, Hera. Hera. And uh, Hera, is she is she finishing a drink? I yes, we'd probably be having a small uh, like a what's it called a uh, martini shaped glass of milk. Um, <laughs> Of milk, did you say? Oh, yeah, for the fucking <laughs> <laughs> this is premium um, milk, full cream. <laughs> That's full cream. Um, no, yes, we'll probably be sipping on a drink and popping it down. Turn to Molotov. Uh, I suppose this is our stuff coming up. Ian, could you please describe what we see on the opposite side of the booth? Um, you'll see a, a tabaxi male, um, also with sort of dark brown fur, um, black stripes patterned across, um, uh, very tall, very broad shouldered and has a sort of deep, dark orange eyes. Um, he, um, would be wearing sort of chain mail plated at different points it's definitely um big shoulder pads um and perhaps the most striking thing about him since he was sitting in a carriage with just the two of us he would have been sitting there probably making notes in his in his journal with a with probably a couple of some some form of a spirit um so a very short class um and he would be flicking through the pages with his mechanical right arm uh, that Hera, Hera will recognize, but he tends to hide from strangers. Um, and at the mention of having to leave, would probably uh, close up his journal and sort of pull his cloak, which is sort of a, a half cloak that he sort of pins across in it. Um, so it sits across his right arm and he pins it together with um, the sort of brass sigil which I have sketched out. It's the one well, let's one see it. Um, very crude little drawing. It's sort of a cog with these patterns on the outside. Um, and which you would know well. Um, and sort of pins it together um, over his shoulder and. Um, probably pull his shield a little closer, a big heavy looking round shield with um, with the same same sigil on the front and in the center of, a cog, of the cog is this big opal colored gem um, sort of sitting in the mid, sitting in the center. Um, nice, as you put your journal away, <laughs> okay, carry on. Yes, I suppose, let's see what the town was all about. As you put yourself away and get ready to depart, the autonome <laughs> flies back down again, clears your drinks and like puts them in a little compartment in its uh, chest. Please be aware that the tr the train from House Orion will stop at Bathrond and turn back around. There is no further trail, as this is the end of the line. Is there anything I can assist with before you exit? Uh, do you do a drink for the road? Drink for the road? Yes. We do not have any drinks called for the road. Uh, then one more vodka, please. See it like computer. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, once we've done that, until we be back. Exactly. We only get this. We don't get this sort of experience very often. It was the last place time you were in something so heavy. Another one of these, and a light if you would. Of course. <laughs> Flies off uh, and comes back and delivers your last drinks as the train comes to a stop and you, you finish up. Um, you see out the window a... Not a run-down town, but a town that has not had a lot of work put into it. Quite a lot of their houses have been mismatched. Some are built of brick, some are built of wood, some are... Uh, semi falling apart but as you stop at the rail station the it is mostly well put together uh you get up and exit the train as the doors slide open uh and the the heat kind of comes sauntering in uh 
as the first roll of the whole campaign, can I get a perception check from either of you? Yes. Either or. Uh, either, either or both. Either or both. Up to you. No pressure. Let's, let's, let's both have a gander. Let's be serious. Uh, oh, not bad. I actually don't, uh, Here we go. I don't know my... Yeah. <laughs> don't know all your stats? Yeah. Nope. Uh, <laughs> plus one. I'm going to be so perceptive. Uh, that's a 17 total. Oh, it, very nice. Uh, that's a 15 total. 15 total. Both reasonably good. You see uh, ahead of the station um, what almost looks like a main street. Uh, it's not cobbled or anything. It all is just dirt um, ground. But you do see ahead of you a um, a sign hanging out from one of the, the longer buildings and two-story buildings, and it says the Salvation Hotel. Um, you also notice that you look down the line and you see the second and third class carriages emptying out uh, a lot more people are on those not hundreds um i'd say you know maybe 50 or so but they are coming out and they're all kind of uh, nudging against each other and there's seems like they had to open the doors themselves even um there's a mixture of of cultures and races there is you know some gnolls there are some uh orcs there's some elves a couple of halflings Nothing distinct stands out, except that they are further down the line than you are. Uh, what would you like to do? Um, do we have a place we were meeting? No, oh, this was always you. Did, did the, the professor say anything? Uh, where do we meet? Do we, have, do we have a place to stay? Not as such as... No, just... See what is happening, I guess. Yeah, well, towards our salvation, then, eh? Yes. I suppose we get a get a feel for the town, I guess. For sure. You want to head towards the Salvation Hotel? Yeah. Sounds like a good place to start. You walk up, uh, and you see a human standing on the outside, quite brawn, but quite built. Uh, and as you walk up to the door, he goes, uh, I hope you know this is an established residence for esteemed guests only. If you can pay your way, you can enter, but we will have no scrabble or scavengers in this building. Did you see which carriage we just came on? No, I don't pay attention to the train stations. Yeah, well, we, are, we are first class passengers. We are on an important mission from Morgrave Universe. I don't care of your history, I only care that you pay. Please. And he opens the door behind you. You walk into a, uh, not a courtyard, but like a lobby area, um, and it has like a little miniature fountain feature. Um, as you see a orc behind the desk uh, with some glasses on and a little twirled up moustache. Oh, uh, hello, and welcome to the Salvation Hotel. Uh, my name is Jedeviah. How can I be of assistance? Sorry, Jevadiah. Other way around. Jevadiah. Jevadiah. Well, we're uh, looking for a room, perhaps for a couple couple nights stay. Of course, of course. Uh, we are more than uh, be welcome to anyone that pays. Um, our prices are very simple. Five gold per night uh, will get you a room. and pull out a small purse and sort of reach into it and is it so five gold per person per room would you like to share a room we could share is it uh single beds or whatever you wish we can make up anything for our guests uh, tell you what maybe maybe we let's check it down now first maybe this I mean, do it. What time of day are we at? I'm going to say mid afternoon, late afternoon. Um, Let's look at the point, too. And then we'll decide where we stay. Jebediah sees the all kind of conversation going and goes, my, my apologies for 
eavesdropping, uh, if you are looking for somewhere not as reputable as the Salvation Hotel, you could try the Grey Beyond. Uh, I'm not sure of their prices, I don't mingle with people that really uh, set up shop there, but uh, I'm sure we could work something out. Maybe you could put down a deposit and, and pay later. Are you are you here to hunt treasure, or...? Well, we're sort of here to see what the treasure hunting is all about. Oh. Is, uh, is this the place where the treasure hunters meet? Oh, gosh, no. We wouldn't have the dust and rubble of them walking in here. No, the Grey Beyond is where the board will be put up of any crews being assembled or any uh, rewards to be given for various missions. I it sounds like you're leaving the wrong place. No, but it says Salvation on the sign, you see, so I assume... You know, yes. you doing salvaging. No, no salvaging in here. You do that out there, you come here for rest. We can accommodate any needs. I start putting the bottle back in a little bit. <laughs> you see, you see him like, uh, he, oh, uh, uh, I'm sure we can work something out. Uh, you, you don't have to pay right away. Um, we can make comfort. We can have uh, some air elementals in your room to, to cool it down from this drastic heat that's outside. It... It's not that warm. Yeah, well. We like the heat. Maybe we'll look around. I, I'm sorry for wasting your time. You're welcome back anytime you, you want. Um, Cat outside will recognize your faces now and he'll allow you entry. Like Kit or Cat? K, <laughs> K E T, Kit. I definitely heard What, what did you just call when, 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 when you're now realizing half your notes, you've got to re establish. Excuse me. I, no, I, sorry for wasting your time. Let's, let's just... No time wasted at all. I'll, I'll set up some rooms just in case you decide to come back. On the house. No, no, no extra charge. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, sir. You've been most accommodating. <laughs> Gives a bow as you make a turn out and start heading for what's so-called the Grey Beyond. Yes. Like... Sounds like more our style. Definitely thought there'd be more salvation. Yeah, I, I call that false evidence. Yes. Uh, let us wander with that. Maybe we follow the, uh, the, the lower carriage. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> All right. As you head outside, we will zoom out and weirdly in time until they all line up to <laughs> uh, Jid. You find your character um, standing just outside the north end of town. You're looking at Vaderond, um having traveled from a, a, a caravan that could take you so far and set the rest of the way on foot. But here it is in front of you. You see the outskirts of the town, some scrapyards around the outer edges, um, and a train that has just pulled into the station and people are coming off it. You feel the piece of paper in your hand as you... Put it back in your pocket. Uh, could you please describe what we see? Uh, Puck is short. He's a halfling. Uh, probably a little bit dusty from the road, but uh, relatively well-dressed uh, in simple, understated clothes. Uh, the kind of clothes that will enable you to uh, just sort of disappear in a crowd if you need to. Um, he's wearing uh, some... The, the, the colours of his house, a bit of purple, a bit of green uh but he's uh as i say like understated got a cloak on for, for the for the road keep the sun off him keep the wind out keep the dust out uh and a sword at his belt uh and yeah tucks tucks this piece of paper back into a little pocket buttons it up uh and decides that probably the best way to find uh what he's looking for is to see where the people getting off the train go give me um the second roll of the campaign another perception check Ooh. Hey, that's not so bad. That's a reception. Uh, 18. 18. Very nice. Quite a lot of them head out uh, and that they do disperse. It seems like everyone's got their own business in here. Um, and you know as well, to travel by lightning rail does cost money, um, even in the lower carriages. Um, these people don't look, they don't look homeless. They don't look shabby. Um, uh, they just almost look like common folk would be the 
the term to apply. Mm -hmm. But the majority do um, take a lift out from the station and head to a what looks like a tavern that is built on top of an inn. Uh, two buildings that shouldn't be uh, be mashed together. There is a, a flag on the outside. It's not even a wooden sign. It's a tattered flag, and it says in clearly almost massive font that someone has painted the grey beyond spelt g-r-a-y does that name mean anything to me um not off the top of your head uh okay. actually i no it does uh this tavern does uh, ring a bell that you have been told about might be not running up to standard as your yep. um House has let you know that uh, you don't see any insignia of House. Uh, is it Galea? Galea? Galanda. Galanda. There's no uh, uh, sigil on the outside where there should be. There's no sigil, right. sigil at all. Uh, and just one other question Do I have my companion? Uh, your companion. Ah, yes, you do. Cool. Cool. So, so I'm going to. If you want to describe that. Yeah, I, uh, I'm going to slip off the back of this little dinosaur that I've been riding. Give him a little, give him a little scratch under the chin and say, well, it looks like a likely place. Let's uh, start there. And I'm going to start walking over there. And, and if we're staying with me, then I'll hitch him outside near sure. some water. There is a, like a trough of water. Definitely a place for riders to put their, um, their mounts. Uh, and what is, your, what is your mount's name? Yeah, I don't know yet. <laughs> um, I'll get back to you on that. You turn to your mount, uh, and it kind of nudges up against you, and you tie the rope. Uh, dinosaurs are a bit weird to kind of pitch up as they stand on two legs, and uh, but you know a way to do it. And you see um, almost a surprising variety of beasts out here. There is a, a small donkey, a, a horse, uh, an ox uh, in the water just <laughs> lapping up seeming to be as happy as Larry, but you tie your dinosaur to the side and they don't seem to take much notice. You know, the ox kind of looks up and gives it a side eye, but then goes back to drinking. Uh, in this world, as we will learn along the adventure, some things are more normal than they are in other worlds. His name, I'm gonna, it's, it's Swift Scale. Swift Scale. Scale. Oh, well. Yeah, cool. Well, I'll uh, hitch him up, give him another little pat, and I'll take something out of my pack and just give him a little bit of food. Yep. Um, I'll say, oh, hopefully this doesn't take too long. Straighten myself up, rub some uh, you know, dirt and dust off me and uh, make my way up the stairs and, and go go on in. Sure. We're talking like two steps up into a veranda, um, swinging doors open up, and almost the hustle and bustle of inside gets you straight away. There is a hodgepodge of people in here. There are, um, you know, there's a couple of humans drinking their probably 10th ale of the day. Um, you know, there's a bugbear sitting over by the fire. There's some knolls by the door leaning up kind of like against the posts. Um, and you see in the middle of the room a triangular column. And on it uh, looks like it has been used for um, notice board uh, on all three sides, but a lot of the the things are ripped and the details are gone and there is only like the nail and the top of them left on it looks almost like no one has put anything up in a while uh behind the bar you see a gnome um walking around on some mechanical uh stilts you know the ath athletes ones that bend almost backwards at the knee rather than forwards uh and they're kind of like springy like uh the 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 boston robot legs as he walks around um, and he wears this uh, kind of gold uh, gold shimmer of a cowboy hat. Walks around. He's, he's just pouring drinks. He hasn't noticed you walking. Yeah. Is there like a bar to go sit at or anything? Uh, yes, he, he's behind that. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm going to make my way, make a beeline over there. Uh, and I will look around. Are there any halfling or shorter stature accessible stools that'll get me up nice and high. Sure, they've got rungs along them um, that you can easily prop yourself up on. <clears throat> yep, I will climb up uh, and I'll probably just stand on the chair if, if you know, I'll wave a little bit, but if he doesn't get my attention, I'll stand on the chair and, and put my hand up. 
sure. uh, and wait for him to come over. Gives you a nod and a, a wave and finishes pouring an ale and, and throws it over. Comes over to you. Well, hi. Uh, my name is uh, Brackle Shortcourt, and welcome to the Grey Beyond. Uh, what business brings you in here today, uh, little short fella? Yes, well, uh, I, w I wish it was uh, under better circumstances, but I've been sent. I need to speak with Callie. Oh, you see him kind of frown straight away. Kelly is a little bit indispensed at the moment. I'm running the place in her absence. Why, well, I will be happy to listen to your tale over a beverage. I can get you an ale or a wine. What's your preference? Uh, my preference is to speak with Kelly. When will she be back? Uh, well, come on now. We're all friends here. We got all day. It's a beautiful day outside, and we have one of the finest ales in all of Atherant. I can tell you that. I'll have an ale, but uh, I'd like an answer. He already turns around as soon as you say that and just pours it. <laughs> There you go, on the house. Uh, welcome to our town. How far have you travelled from, my friend? Uh, a good long way. I've come from Gatherhold. Oh, I see. Well, it is a long way. Well, I'm all ears to your uh, story, but I do have uh, more customers to, to serve. I'll be before back in just... Go, before you go, I would like an answer. When can I expect to see Callie? Well, uh, she should be back by nightfall, I hope. Can I insight that? You sure can. 18. 18. Uh, he seems unsure of that answer. Hmm. Well, I'll be here. Uh, of course. And if she's not, I'll need to talk to you. Uh, no worries at all. I am happy to uh, maintain the business of the place uh, while in her absence. Will you be requiring a bed for tonight? Did, they, did I see stables when I came through? Uh, place for... Not so much stables at this place, more like um, a place where you could hold your animal um, mm -hmm. or your mount, but not not nice. You know what I mean? Like yeah. pins. I guess you could call them pins. Sure, sure. Uh, that that remains to be seen. I'm uh, I have a few other things to work out about my stay here, but of I wasn't planning on staying the night necessarily. Well, if you do change your mind, it's uh, once over for the night. Very good. I will take my beer and climb climb down. Uh, and I'm going to find just like a corner somewhere where I can kind of just look over and like you see me like walking around and like noticing sure. all the uncollected beer mugs and like the stains and the cracks of the floor and just sort of shaking my head and starting to like, you know, take some notes of things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, you can make your way um, kind of like way? over <laughs> the, the, the side, just out of the way a little bit and you pull up a chair and, and it's got that thing where the chair kind of has that that wobble that you just yeah, just it's just enough that you can't fix with a beer coaster um just roll my eyes quite quite unacceptable to be honest uh as you sit down and you start sipping on the beer uh we will cut to get in the same room um sitting by the fire uh, step your character reflects on a couple of days of travel that have led you to this place yeah. And you look over and you see playing next to the fire um, the little girl. Some toys playing make-believe make kind of thing. And yeah. then you kind of look back at your drink and take a sip and look up and the flames are sitting there alone. It's, you know that there's no real person there. Yeah. Um, could you please describe what we see? Sure. So uh, Vage uh, is a um, big green uh, bugbear. Uh, who's got these uh, long kind of brown dread locks and a big kind of like fluff mane around his whole face. Um, he's uh, uh, wearing this kind of like almost makeshift uh, armor. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's made of iron, but it's almost like kind of like woven together through twigs and vines and very strange cloth and um, stuff like that. Uh, uh, and he, how, how, uh, on his back, he's got a big glaive, um, and holding as well on his side, uh, just on his lap, um, sorry, is a, is a big mace, um, with, uh, these kind of like green fluorescent vines of mineral that kind of flow through it, um, and as well a, uh, big kind of stone shield. Um, yeah. Nice. 
as you sit there, just, you just keep into yourself. You hear beside you a chair kind of pull. And uh, as you look up, you see a, um, an elven character, but they're not highly dressed. They, they have similar almost vibes to you. It's, it's a lot of leathers and cloth. Um, and they've got a feather coming out of their, their long hair. That's very tangly and messy as they sit down next to you and go, greetings, uh, mind if I take a seat here? No, please sit. You're very kind. Hard to find kind people in this uh, town sometimes. Uh, excuse my uh, manners. Bellinor. Bellinor Helladan. Uh, Bellinor, pleasure. My name's Vargir. Stands a hand out as the leather glove uh, she is wearing it has like stubs around the outside of it and shakes her hand. I'll shake it back with my big green hand. Oh, a strong grip you have there. Well, uh, sometimes you need to learn. Pray I ask. A lot of people in here. You sure do. Pray I ask, what is your business in town? I haven't seen you around recently. Uh, I'm just here to make a find a way of making a bit of quick cash before moving on. Quick cash. Well, uh, if it wasn't for the local gang taking away all the the quests on the on the board, it would be a lot more cash flowing through here. But I might have something for you. You look big and strong enough to help me. Oh, yes. What might that be? Out in the grey. I've been hunting something. The, yes. uh... It's called the offspring of, offspring of the beast. In my people, we believe in a... A higher power. I'm not gonna fill your head with stories, but... This thing, it seems to be, uh... Taking away a lot of our that we send out. I'm not much of an adventurer myself since many days past, but I was hoping if you could maybe put together a team of whoever you can find in this place, I'd reward you handsomely if you could bring me the skull of this beast. Well, I can see what I can do. Do you have any informa uh, more information about it? Like, for one, what is it? Well, it, it's a bit hard to explain. I don't really think it has a name as of yet, but from what I hear, it can freeze people in the spot. It can see. prey upon adventurers from the shadows. Do you have any recommendations of people around here that I might be able to help me with this endeavor? Kind of scoots back her chair and looks around, uh, and you now see the um, tavern as it is. The, again, a hodgepodge of... of, of people of, of friends of uh, maybe work acquaintances um you know a couple of gnolls leaning up against the post you see uh, a halfling getting a drink at the bar you see uh some orcs and stuff on the side and uh just walking in now you see two tabaxi let see um uh, yeah, does she point anyone out specifically? No, like, she just kind of goes almost like a, a, a you have... There, there, you've got it. Yeah, okay. Um, I'll say, uh, well, if I do do this, where can I find you after? Well, you'll be able to find me down by the uh, Church of the Silver Flame. Church of the Silver Flame. I uh, uh, don't associate myself strongly with their beliefs, but it has been a place of safety and uh, uh, and housing for me and my partner while we stay here in Bethrond. Look, I'm happy to do this for you, but uh, yeah. I want to take half the pain now and half later. Oh, I don't know you. Uh, no, of course you don't. Um, well, uh, it depends what kind of payment you want. As you know, around here, the uh, the currency is both gold and salvage. I see. Look, let me get a team together. I'll see you here this afternoon. Oh, what, what time is it? Mid-afternoon. Uh, oh, okay, cool. I'll, uh, I'll see you here tomorrow morning. I'll be here. And then we can discuss it. 
Sounds good. Gets up, kind of gives you a nod, and starts walking out. Uh, as she does, I'm going to stand up from my chair with my empty pint, look down and say, um, I'll be back, Tim, and walk to the bar next to the halfling and kind of just put it down and say, um, uh, another, please. Sure. As you say that, we will zoom out from Vargir, uh, and meet our fifth and final character. Uh, as you've been in town since this morning, um, and you find yourself at what is called the Scrapyard. The Scrapyard Market. It is a amalgamation of, of tents and uh, uh, huts and everything in between as vendors and um, makeshift stalls have popped up day by day. Could you please describe your character to us, Michael? Absolutely. Um, Ghost is of halfling stature, but with half elven features. Um, more pointed ears, uh, lighter skin, slightly taller than your average halfling, although anyone with a even a decent amount of perception can see that he's only standing at about three foot three, but the eight inches of steel under his boots boost that to a nice clean four feet. Um, bring up my picture. He's got uh, shoulder length black hair um, with these streaks of almost um, acid washed uh, mottled blondes and browns in the front. What looks like years of running gloved hands through the front of his fringe to push it out of his face as he's working. Um, big dark black leather coat uh, with what looks like almost hand-forged buttons, um, stitching that has been restitched time and time again. Um, definitely worn and well-loved, but has been taken care of uh, through his travels. Leather boots with uh, brass and steel filaments, um, which also look hand hammered. Uh, a bandolier around his chest, all with the same distinct cross stitched pattern. Um, a crossbow that is currently sitting folded um, and heavily modified over what looks like, again, many, many years of um, keeping care of his tools apparently tucked on the inside of his, of his jacket. Um, uh, bright red eyes and a small scar that uh, pierces through his eyebrow, comes up to his forehead. And a singular gloved hand, um, again with these uh, hand-built features, brassed um, caps over the knuckles and a like a um, wound bandaging underneath it that holds a very shiny uh, brass and steel briefcase with small inlaid glass beads where the lock would be. Nice. As you kind of stand there, almost almost a, a stationary figure in one of those time-lapse videos, you, as you kind of just unawareedly have taken a moment to yourself, uh, you feel a shove on your right side uh, as you look next to you and a dwarf that stands almost four foot tall as well, um, clad in, in, in uh, almost stone-like armor um, as he goes, Oi, better snap out of it before someone knocks you over. I know that's stitching anywhere. You're up from the moorholds, aren't you? I see you've got a good eye. I spent a long time there myself. I've heard it's amazing. I definitely want to get there eventually in my lifetime. Drugen Bristlebrow. Extends a hand. What was that? Drugen? Drugen Bristlebrow. Uh, as you do see under his, like, he's got one of those uh, caps on. Uh, as you see, his eyebrows would reach at least three or four inches uh, thick. <laughs> Friends call me ghost. Well, 
Is that not a haunting name if I've ever heard one? Nice to meet your acquaintance. I'm afraid you're a bit late for the markets today, son. Uh, it's a shame I got, um, got distracted on my way here. No, you uh, look like one that might drift off with the dreams most often during the day. You be careful with that. I think it's something about the topography. Hmm. What brings you into town? Oh, um, chasing a chasing a strange rumor. Oh, rumors! Now you know how dwarves love rumors. Uh, God, you'd like the kind that chase you into the grave. Well, the grave is a dreadful place, but you keep fighting from beyond it, and you won't be a pet, a, a, a pet to the living. I threw that. Through that. Well, if I uh, find myself a little late for the markets, perhaps you could uh, show me where to get a drink. Seem like a man with a few stories. I, I could show you a few stories. You seem like you could share a few with me too. Tell me first. What rumors might uh, buy you a drink? Said that uh. Said that those are those strange animated creatures, the Warforge, came out of came out of Sire. I have heard that too. You be careful what you call them around here, though. They're a bit more common than you think. He kind of nudges his head to one of the buildings, uh, kind of near uh, what I described as the Grey Beyond. Almost across the road from it, you see a more sturdy uh, brick and stone building. Um, and on top of it, it says uh, Sheriff's Place. I uh, guess I'm not used to the customs yet. And what about the uh, Warforged? Have you heard? Uh, I'm working on something. A researcher. Interesting. Well, more of a builder. Tinker, if you may. Well, even me. That's got me buying you two drinks at least. Cool. <laughs> I'll show you a spot. Kind of puts his arm around your shoulder, and as, as you start walking down to the Grey Beyond, uh, you both hear a, a bang. Uh, but before we, the rest of you hear that, we're going to cut back to Hera and Molokov. As you enter this tavern, the Grey Beyond, you see uh, up at the bar a halfling and a bugbear uh, sitting next to each other. You see um, some orcs and some humans scattered around the bar, uh, this gnome on stilts serving everyone. Uh, as you find a kind of table off to the side again, uh, just as you sit down, you see a shadow loom over your um, table. A knoll figure stands there he's kind of got a, a a scar on one side of his face he's missing a few teeth and he uh leans down the table and goes oh greetings what brings you to the gray beyond uh, hello um i suppose uh, some drinks maybe oh, some company some drinks would be nice yes i agree you got to pay up first in this place, though, unfortunately. You seem like you guys got a bit of wealth on you. Can I get an insight check on this fella? Sure, what are you trying to insight? Uh, I'm trying to figure out if he actually works there or if he's just trying to get my money. <laughs> oh, sure, 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 sure. Give me an insight roll. Uh, Reese, do I happen to notice this, given that I'm looking out for th things that I don't think should uh, be in this place? I'm going to say we'll we'll resolve it first. Uh, but cool. you probably do catch it out of the side, uh, side of your eye. Cool. An 11. An 11. Um, hard to tell at this place. There doesn't seem to be a uniform or anything. Um, as much as... I mean, it looks a bit rough, but, uh, you know, so does people at the, the station, so does the bouncer at uh, the Salvation Hotel. Um, well, before we get any drinks, uh, we're more looking to... Perhaps join a 
any of the expeditions. You're uh, treasure uh, hunters, are we? The adventurer. Oh no, I don't adventure, my friend. Uh, I just collect. Uh, and at this point, uh, Puck, you will notice this as you do as well, guys. Two more gnolls stand in the doorway. Uh, you yeah. see the bar owner kind of start shuffling to one of the back rooms. Uh, at this point, uh, anyone in the in the tavern can interact with this scenario. I will immediately notice the barkeep slinking away. Less, I'm gonna make less my... slinking, more kind of backing away. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Like, he's, he's afraid, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Um, I said I was going to be, like, against the wall. Uh-huh. Using my small stature, I'd like to try and make my way... Make my way? That's going to get so annoying. Um, all the way, sort of, like, along the walls to the door. Or, like, basically, I'm trying to hide and, like, slink along the walls, kind of ducking between tables and things uh-huh. to get closer to the door. Yeah. If I can try. You can do that. Um, give me a stealth check. Oh, I think I'm pretty good at stealth. Hang on. Okay, yep. That is a 27. A 27 at level 1. I rolled 18 you... and I have plus okay, yep. 9 because of expertise. Nice. Nice. Uh, so, Vagir, yeah. you don't even notice this halfling leave your side. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what if, you, if you'd started a conversation or not, but like he kind of just is not there anymore as you not now t- turn around and you can't see the halfling but you can see the two gnolls standing by the door cross-armed and you can see this other knoll hands on the table you know kind of like that leaning thing yeah. people do on the bar tables uh, uh in front of these two tabaxi um uh do i i've been i've been here for a bit do i know that they work do they work here you haven't seen them serve any drinks no um <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna stand up and turn around and just say really like calmly and just say um uh hey look now we're all just here to grab a drink and rest i don't think there's any need for trouble as you say that uh here in molokov you see the one leaning on your table kind of look up into the like into the air and goes doesn't even turn around to face you uh, yeah, but he goes look if you want to stay out of this that would interest you the best we're just here to collect a few bits and pieces, and we'll be on our way. Isn't that right, Brackle? You hear from the back room. Take what you want. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna look directly at the uh, at Hera and um, sorry, Hera Molokov. And Molokov. Just kind of like see what they what they look looking like and thinking. Yeah, I sort of see this big bugbear stand up with his big stone shield and. This mismatched, mismatched armor and look at him kind of not backing down. Look over to here. I mean, you are here to collect. We are also here to collect. We could maybe do collecting together. No, we don't have anything yet. So... Bang! He, he hits his hand on the table and he goes, My friends, as he now just uh, points to the door, saw you two leaving the fancy carriage. That means you've got stuff on you that we want. Now you hand it over and we'll be on our way. Everyone else at this point has kind of gone silent in the uh, in the bar. He thinks we will give him stuff. Uh, you a trader, you, or you, 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 you're trying to rob us. Is that what is happening? I'll trade your goods for your life. <laughs> this doesn't have to get messy here. Uh, as as he says that, I'm gonna kind of like grind my stone mace on the ground yep. and just go. You're right. It doesn't. I've drawn my rapier as well, and sure. I want to try and. Uh, I'm probably too short for a knoll to maybe. I don't know if I'm if I can get it to the jugular or something, but if not, I'll go for like that. You know the you know the really uh, what is it called the the femoral artery in the leg. <laughs> I, I know I know exactly what you mean. Uh, uh, with a 27 on stealth as well, you rest it right up against his fur, and you see him just like literally just like he's getting excited. His tail's like starting to wag a bit at this like oh there's going to be a fucking fist fight in the bar. Uh, and your sword lays perfectly against uh, exactly where you need to cut. Um, I will also reiterate for uh, the guys that haven't played in the campaign with me before, if you can describe something like if you go up to a sleeping king and you just slit the throat, 
are not going to be like roll damage oh he doesn't die he wakes up from that and starts fighting you like if you if you can describe something that that's uh good enough to kill something or de definitely damage it then you can go straight away for it yeah i'm not i'm not doing anything i, I understand like, i'm not gonna i understand but your it. blade is in a very <laughs> good yeah. place at the yeah. moment yeah and so having that there i'll look back and, I'm, and i imagine the guy hasn't noticed me yet and i'll say uh i think it's mighty time that you guys left this establishment this establishment otherwise things will get messy you're it, not welcome here it kind of like kind of uh freezes up and feels the now blade on its thing he goes uh so i'm calling out to the the leader guy oh like sure drawing sure drawing attention drawing attention to him that i'm here and i've got a knife on his guy yeah um the leader guy will turn around and go and kind of survey the room now go brackle i told you not to put up a fuss when we're doing things uh and he will swing around and go for a, a swipe on molokov as we will start okay. rolling initiative hey hey do i need to be on this uh you can roll your initiative um but this is the kind of bang you're hearing as like a table is flown down on the ground or something yeah so for the that. first uh fight of the campaign <laughs> We'll Damn. roll initiative, and I'll also let you decide where you want to action your blade, um, Jed, or Puck. Yep. So let me just uh, bring the things up. See, we have two protectors. I got an 11. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking all right. That was not fine when I got. So <laughs> I'll be able to show you our battle map. Oh, oh that's right. Oh, yeah. Ah. Oh, I love, I love this. Very <laughs> <laughs> cool. There we go. Okay, so initiatives, Puck. Twenty-five. Uh, ghost. Three. Makes sense. Bargear. Uh, eleven. Molokov. 12. Kara? Uh, 14. Um, yes. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> That's a two for them. Oh. Okay. So, um. Oops. All right, so uh, slams round and goes to take a swing at Molokov. Um, are you going to react and take a, a slice at this guy, Puck? This is a free action I... before your turn. Yeah, sure. Okay, I, I think I will, but I won't slice the vein, the the artery if I can. I'll just cut. I want to basically cut across his leg to kind of hamper his movement. Sure. Uh, I'm going to say don't roll to hit. Just go for a, a damage roll, straight damage. Uh, it would be good if I remembered what I think it's a D eight. For... <laughs> new Sorry, stats, I new was... stats. Yeah, I totally wasn't prepared for that. Um, rapier is D eight plus five. That is at some point my rolls are going to be bad, but I'm rolling incredibly well at the moment. That's a thirteen damage. <laughs> thirteen damage, very nice. I, and, and if that's enough to kill, I don't know if it is. It like, is. If, I don't want to kill him. I just want yeah, just to incapacitate him or something like that. Sure. You run your blade along his leg, and it kind of like <laughs> whimpers and falls down. Uh, but right at this point. Um, the hit is going to come round and uh, connect with Molokov. I'm going to roll for an attack. Uh, that's a 14 to hit. He raises his shield back up and it slams against it. Bang! It, it, it hits and you realize that he's swinging around with like brass knuckles um, as this, this hit echoes out through the thing. Um, so we're now in initiative. Puck, you're up first. Yep. Um, I reckon I'll be just like one across there. Yep. Um... I'm going to take another swing at the guy who was right right next to um the, yeah the guy I hit before I guess. Yeah, sure, go for it. Uh that's a Sorry, all these new numbers. That to hit is a an 18 to hit. 18 does hit. Go for damage. Uh that's 11 points of damage. What's the damage? Piercing damage. Um yeah. Uh, so your first hit was uh, 13, right? 
Yes. 13. Minus 11. Yeah, so uh, as you swing round as it falls down to the ground and you kind of whoosh, do another quick slice and it kind of whoosh, starts like coughing up blood, it's it's uh, unconscious. Okay. <laughs> wow. Uh, nice. Uh, and I will, having done that, drop the ball on. Do I want to move? Yeah, I'm going to dash around here and just get up behind this guy. Yep, awesome. As you swipe, swipe, uh, one of them goes down and you just duh, 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 your little feet along the ground uh, as you run up behind this guy who's coming, recoiling from his uh, shield hit. Uh, Hera, uh, you spring into action. What's going on? Sorry, technically I can only get to there because I have very short movement. Oh, okay. I'm go to there. Hey, um, I think... Oh, Hera, you look fucking badass. Look at so you. Seeing him sort of turn and realising that this is all a lot, lot more intense than I thought it was. Um, I will sort of reach into my pocket and pull out like these almost look like large, almost like marble sized seeds, but they're all like decayed and and almost already dead seeds. And I'm just gonna slap my hands together and cast poison spray as I pop these seeds and they burst out. So. Sick. Dust of poison onto him. Uh huh. I believe. Um, it is. It is a Constitution save, please. Con save. That's a three. That'll that'll fail it. Um. So it takes six poison damage. Um. He takes, yeah, six, six, six poison damage. Six poison damage. Nice. Um, yeah, these seeds pop in his face, and he as he's like recalling from the shield head, he <laughs> and starts like snarling at the poison that's now coursing through his eyes. Um, yeah. But I am. Um, I am um, Molokov, you're up next. Anything else here? No, because if I move, he's gone. So me. Um, I will actually start moving, I guess. Um, I'm just sort of almost going to be like, slap it together and sort of like be grabbing my pouch. And yep. I'm trying to scuttle like along the top of that table and I'm going to try and at least move to like there so I'm not necessarily out of range. Sure, you kind of like do like a little uh, cat like jump over the table, um, but you are still close enough to him that he won't take an opportunity to attack. Molokov, you're up. Um, so as he raises the shield, um, and he's sort of recoiling from the, the poison, so it seems you're quickly outnumbered, friend, and just slams the shield into his face. Nice. Uh, yeah. Go for an attack. Or a... Uh, it's only gonna be a... what's a plus? <laughs> <laughs> how do I... what is this? D&D? &D? Uh, yeah, how do I do D&D? Uh, uh, actions. I haven't done this. That'll one. be it. Plus six. So that'll be a uh, uh, 13. 13 doesn't hurt. Ah, so he just sort of swings wide and yeah. then hops it up again. As he kind of like recoils from the poison, you swing uh, and then he's flailing around and your shield kind of just like bounces off him. Uh, no damage done. Anything else you'd like to do? Uh, no, I'll just sort of hold, hold fast and. Uh, I hope he keeps looking at me. All right, but yeah, as you see out of the corner of your eye, one of the knolls at the door drops and a shadow just <laughs> scoots across the room um, and you see a, a brawl starting with this one here. Everyone else is kind of like clearing out, jumping out of windows and getting out of the way. Um, it doesn't look like they are keen or ready for a fight, um, but what would you like to do? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of like see, obviously that one's kind of being dealt with. So I'm going to give this kind of like, cheeky menacing smirk to the one by the door and just kind of go <laughs> uh and i want to charge up to him and just like tackle him through the door nice <laughs> um give me a give me a strength check uh sure i can definitely do that um that is a 18. 18 easily the the, the saloon doors at the back just go boom and they almost slap back faster than you're out of the doors uh as you spear tackle him out, um, I'm going to say you move like 
another five feet and he's going to be prone. Sure. Um, can I uh, see these guys? You can. You see that they're kind of just like lingering around outside and they've kind of noticed that there is sound going on in the bar and they've, they're, they're starting to pay attention. Yeah, cool. Okay. Uh, I'm then going to just like look at my look at uh, Obak uh, Obak and mm-hmm. give this like ranch's Texas whistle really loudly um, as I kind of wanted to spring into action so as you see the ox that was stationed at the uh, trough before look up as the this this almost woolly ox kind of goes uh, as um, sca- uh, what would you call him scale scale uh, swift scale it's like what the fuck is going on this ox is like and just boom boom boom. what would you like him to do uh i want him to charge directly at these two down here cool uh so he can take his turn straight after you so if you're done with everything then we can now act with him yeah i'll be done so uh what 10 15 20 25 30 uh yeah and then i guess just dash dash cool yeah to get into the thing awesome um uh as he moves 20 feet straight towards the target does that get the charge attack straight away uh i believe charge uh i'm not sure let me says if the ox moves at least 20 feet straight toward the target and then hits it with a gore uh, hits it with with a gore attack yeah yeah sweet okay so it's just gonna kind of like i'll probably actually just keep him there then just for the dramatic effect of charging in later Sure. Uh, he's he's definitely going at full speed towards them. Um, Ghost, as you come down, you hear this bang and crash inside the tavern. Your dwarf friend kind of goes, what the, you know, uh, you see this knoll get tackled outside, uh, almost like you've seen drunken brawls before, but this is with some intent, the spear tackle. And then you see this uh, ox turn up and just start charging towards these other knolls, uh, clearly indicating that the knolls are in the shit here. Um, what would you like to do? Yeah, tell for everyone's eh, friends. Uh, you're saying that to the dwarf? Yeah. Uh, he, in the quick response, he'll go, uh, outside gang, they're here, to, they're here to cause trouble. Great. I can try some new things out. <clears throat> Pulls up across the boat. Um, uh, I will simply for now just advance down the street um tucking the flipping the 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 briefcase um under my arm and then sliding it into a leather strap okay. uh, cool. pulling a canister out of the bandolier and screwing it into the base of the crossbow um that's all i'm gonna do for now cool you're just preparing yep love it um all right, as you kind of skid down the road, your dwarf friend kind of, he's not cowering, but he's kind of like not sure he wants to get involved with this fight. Um, it brings us to the Knoll's turn. Uh, so we're going to go backwards. We're going to go right to left. The main one is going to see that he is surrounded um, and he is going to... He is going to reach behind from his uh, with his knuckles and, and kind of whip out almost a short spear almost as long as the short sword but it's just like a little short shiv spear um and he is going to clear the dust from his nose uh and swing at molokov with a well nice that is a 14 to hit again i will miss miss as it cling, click, clanks off the the shield uh, and these knolls don't have multi-attack so we'll move to the one by the door. It will um, go for an attack. It's going to be standing up, but it's going to kind of like swipe at your legs uh, as it's standing up. Sure. So it's using half its movement to stand. Uh, and then that is a 17 to hit you, Vargir. Misses. Misses. Again, you quick foot even as you are uh, larger than it. Uh, quick foot out of the way is a spear. And it stands up and snarls at your face. Um, these two are going to kind of yelp a little bit and they're going to run into combat with I'm going to say one's going to go into combat with Obuk and the other one's going to try and come and help his friend here okay so Obuk will take an attack of opportunity yes he will 
Okay, cool. So, uh, does a, um, a 17 hit? 17 does hit. And it'll mm. do uh, 5 damage. 5 damage. damage. Working out what you guys can do uh, as Obat kind of like swings a horn out and catches him, but he kind of like hobbles still towards you, Vagia, and goes for a natural one to hit. He trips on the stairs uh, and here he goes prone. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so perfect. Uh, but this guy is going to try and swing it by uh, Obak with for a 10 to hit. Uh, it will hit. It will hit. So that is two points of damage to Obak. Uh, that brings us to the top of the round. Puck, you're up here. You're next. To do our eight. That was awesome. Love that so much, guys. That was great. Right. <laughs> that was a cool person. Um, cool. Um, so he's pulled out a shiv. Yep. I'm just gonna stab. I'm gonna stab him from behind. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that will mean I get sneak attack. Is that correct? You sure do. Excellent. Well, let's roll our attack first. Ooh. The bane of my existence for this whole campaign. Does a 15 hit? A 15 just hits. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, well. that. <laughs> and then that is... Little blade just... <laughs> 12 plus 2. So 14 points of piercing damage. Ooh. Jesus. Nice. Uh, as you kind of like... You almost like square yourself up behind him as he reels from the poison. He tries to hit the shield, and you like just stay out of his vision uh, before you just do like two little boop, boop, like pokes um, and get some some decent hits in. And he kind of like kneels down uh, as you see he's he's very close to to falling, but that didn't quite do it. Cool. I will bonus action disengage. Sure. And I'm going to move down. How wide is the door over here where Vargi is? I'm going to say it's ten feet. So if we zoom. So I'd be able to get through. Yeah, easily. Uh, you can also move through allies at without any cost. Oh, look, are we allies yet? Um, <laughs> You're not killing no. each other yet. <laughs> no, yeah, I'll move. I'll move in. I'm going to only go to there, though, like just outside. Sure, you can, like, I'm... squeeze through the door. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's about all I could move anyway, so. Easy. Cool. Um, Hera, you're up. Molokov, you're on deck. This guy is now on his knees, kind of, but he's gone. He's got shot with from all three sides. What would you like to do? Um, I will sort of just uh, see that he's at least he's down on his knees now. Yep. I would allow you to do like a dex check to, to jump away from him if you want to use it in your movement. Um, that's a good. I might see if I can try and do some damage while we're here. So there's Molotov's next. Um, I would just sort of have like sort of been turned, getting and looking in all directions. I'm sort of piss my head and drop down a little veil and just sort of calmly say to him, don't worry, we all, we all have our time eventually. And I'll just sort of pull my hand back and almost go to touch him on the side of his face and from my hand, a little skeletal hand will come out i'm gonna chill touch him yes just just a quick question is chill touch a ranged spell it is a ranged spell even though it's called chill touch and yeah it's, it's yeah. A and it's, well it's, well. it's not a cold spell either um yeah uh, i you can you can you can re-choose what to do but that would be at disadvantage would be at disadvantage does he have advantage for being flanking uh, he does so that would cancel you're, out you're correct it would be a straight roll there you go. Then I will continue on. <laughs> Ooh, that's fuck. It's going to be a 14. 14. As you reach out, he kind of like, uh, as, as Puck has stabbed him in the back, he still has a little bit of poison around his face and it kind of like just tickles his nose a bit that he, and he like knocks your hand away and the spell kind of dissipates out. I'll just sort of almost have my hand knocked away and just pop my head a little bit in confusion and say, don't be scared. Um, but that's probably all I can do. Very intimidating. Molokov, you're up. You know, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so I've gotten used to it, kind of. Um, 
sort of seeing Hera struggling a little bit um, and seeing that there's a couple more of them now coming at the doorway. Um, I think I'm going to... But also seeing that we've now got allies to... I think he just takes another swing and he just pulls the shield around and tries to hit him again. Yep. Do I have advantage just flanking? You sure do. Beautiful. Not the clint, but this is a dirty 20. Nice. Dirty 20. <laughs> Go for damage. Um, fucking love it. So uh, flanking is going to be the opposite side If you, when we're going to get bigger monsters, as long as you're like somewhat in the opposite side, uh, but it's not going to be if you're like that. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, is nine points of damage. Nine points of damage. It uh, kind of like sniffs at the poison and knocks Hera's arm out of the way. And you see the spell that you've seen in action before kind of dissipate out, and you just bring your shield up and just whack him across the head, and you see his neck go click as he falls down dead. Yes. Leal the hole. Um, and I suppose with my movement, I'll just sort of charge outside. Um, if I can get sort of on the other side of Vagir there. Like up here? Yeah. Um, oops. like up there. Um, and then just to get a shield at the ready. Nice. Um, you come up and you see one of them, uh, that's on the, the, the kind of patio. He's like fallen over himself and is scrambling. You kind of just stand over him. Uh, but Vagir, you now have allies on, well, you have friendly swords on either side of you. Um, yeah, great. What would you like to do? You got one guy next to you that's prone and the other one that's standing. Yeah, so I'm going to, um, seeing, uh, I didn't actually see you kill anyone. You not kill anyone. Uh, I think Vage is not going to, he doesn't want to kill them. Um, so I think the prone one, he's just going to grab his mace and just like smash his leg. Like, sure. just shatter those bones. Yep. Go to um, an attack so with advantage. Advantage, yep. I believe melee attacks to prone or advantage, correct? Yeah, I did. Yep. Uh, so that's a 17 plus 4, 21. 21 to hit. His leg is prime for the picking. Okay, uh, so it'll just be a 1d6 plus 2. Uh, 6, 7, 8 damage. 8 damage, nice. Let's see. You just almost pendulum swing your mace over it and then with all the force bring it down and his leg splits into the floorboard uh, oh. of the patio. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, so that will be all Vargir does. Um, yep. Obak in his uh, lovely little rampage of horn splatters. He's going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 on the angle 30 um, and charge attack. Cool. Before you do that, uh, he's going to get an opportunity yeah. attack from the null next to him with a 13. Uh, that will hit. Uh, three points of damage. Oh. Uh, cool. Um, so he's gonna gore. So this is a plus six to hit. Oh, that's a that's a natural one. Oh, uh, as as the the opportunity attack kind of slices at uh, Obuk's back leg, he kind of doesn't build up enough momentum to get in the charge attack and kind of just comes next to the sky. Yeah, cool. Okay, uh, and that'll be Obuk's turn. All right, uh, Ghost, you're up. Oi! Holy nuts! Didn't anyone ever teach you not to mess with animals? And I'm going to click a little button on the back of the crossbow, and the bolt flies out, the canister that was equipped to it shatters, and a stream of um, this, like, brackish green liquid flies out behind the bolt, and I'm casting... I'm using Tasha's Caustic Brew. Oh, but... yes. Oh. Um, towards the one that was taking swings at the ox, whose name I can't remember. Obak. 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 Obak the ox. Um, so that is going to be... Let's see how this works. Uh, that is going to be a deck save. A deck save from the null. Uh, that's an 18. Ah, it works. His spell will also hurt half damage. Nope, it's a sable side. What was? As the um, yeah, it like splatters across, but it's almost uh, you, 
it's shattered too soon and and the poison kind of drips on the sand and dissolves into it before it actually does any damage to him talking down needs a refining fine and um pulls a lever on the side of the bow and another bolt flips up and yep. and i'm gonna take two steps this way come and get me nice uh all right Knowles, Knowles, Knowles. this guy is going to use harper's movement to stand up um he's going to actually no he's he's got his bung leg doesn't he he's going to do it from the ground at disadvantage he's going to go for vargir mm -hmm. well they're both threes so he will uh go to stab you in the foot but it just goes into the wood um the other knoll next to you um now seeing that the obuck is behind him he's still going to go for you vargir sure 13 uh miss floundering um and he's going to try and run out of there so that's vargir and obuck get an opportunity attack uh so i will swing at him with my mace that's a 18 to hit it will hit which means i don't think he gets out um and he'll take four points no that, that's just sentinel me. only if it's sentinel you have to stop otherwise you can keep moving sure um how much damage sorry four damage from me and from oberk that's a 15 plus six That'll hit. oh shit that guy's went somewhere else okay i'll roll another one uh that's only uh five points of piece of damage five um, he's looking pretty hurt, but he does get a little bit away from you um, yep. as he starts running out this way. Uh, the other knoll is going to start running up. So he's going to 30 feet up, and then he's going to dash Ooh. as they start to flee. Um, but that brings us to the top of the round and Puck. Yeah. Um... Oh. Oh, okay, cool. All right, well, I'm going to use my full 25 feet of movement to get to there, and then I'm going to bonus action dash and get to there. Yep. Uh, because rogues can do dumb things. And then I'm going to make an attack with my rapier. Go for it. Uh, that's a natural 20. Oh, here we go. Oh. No sneak nice. attack, unfortunately. No sneak attack, no. Uh, I rolled a five, which, so how do we do it? How do you do it? Is it doubling the number so, and then adding or? Uh, for this, uh, campaign, we're going to do it a cool way that we were discussing last time. Your normal damage dice, you take the full amount, then you roll damage. Okay. Oh. oh that's so it saves dice. you from rolling like a one and a one and you don't do, so if you get a D6 worth of damage, it's six plus a roll plus, plus your modifier. Yeah, I think that's cool. the best way of doing it. Uh, all right, so that makes it. Uh, uh, also, eight. sorry, uh, before you go, also because a lot of the rules are experimenting and changing at the moment, uh, we are doing crits on everything. Uh, and so spells can still crit and all that stuff, and I can still crit, so don't get comfortable. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I am now uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, go for your damage. So that's 18 points of damage. Woohoo! <laughs> Whoa. you run up and almost just as an extension of your arm swing across and instead of ankle tapping him you tap off his ankle uh, and he goes to put his foot down and just steps on the stump and <laughs> oh. falls down um i'm gonna say he's uh unconscious or dead whatever you want to choose yeah. blood loss yeah uh yeah he can be unconscious that's fine uh cool that's uh that's my turn all right hero you're up left alone in the bar you see everyone is scattered out you can hear combat outside some people are hiding under tables others are like kind of getting ready to fight but they're also not um what would you like to do um i will sort of uh, ooh, uh, ooh, uh sort of looking around the room and probably trying to spot molotov um you can see him in the doorway yeah sort of under the doorway and <sighs> And I'll take a step down and I'll sort of just kneel down to the doll that we were with, give him a little pat on the shoulder, and then walk over to the doorway over there. This dude on the ground there is still set. Could probably just 
confusion to back some movement on. I'll skip and jump over him. Yeah, I think I will use my um, called my feline agility and I can double my speed until the end of the turn, but then I can't move. You can, you can move normally. Oh, you can't. It recharges when you don't move okay. around. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to use my feline agility to sort of I'll like run over there, see that it's getting quite crowded and there's a big box thing. Um, okay. and to be fair, I'm just going to have to go. So. I'm just going to run over down here and just sort of look back and try and see if I can spot, um, not spot more, but I can sort of see it, but I'm sort of like looking at what's happening and trying to make eye contact with him and work out what the fuck we're doing. This was not part of the plan. Multiple. Copy uh, that. Uh, is that all you're doing? Yeah, yeah. To be fair, I'll probably not be too sure what to be doing. So, yeah, we'll put, we'll just sort of run and get out of there and and be assessing and looking around. All right. Um, Molokov, you're up. And ignore the extra token that's going to pop up in a couple of seconds. I've got you a dino token. Beautiful. Jesus. <laughs> Look at oh him. Oh my god. Yes. He is a, he's a medium beast. Okay. What's the, what was the name, sorry? Swift uh, Scale. S- yeah. Slither Skirt. Swift. Swift Scale. Swift. Swift. <laughs> Alright, you should be able to control him as well. Let's bring it down there. I sort of see you trying to catch my eye and like give me that quizzical look and I'm just gonna mm, and just bring my shield down on the one in front of me. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, attack with advantage. He is prone. Beautiful. <laughs> and he has a mace in his leg. <clears throat> ah, it's only a 13 again. A 13 it doesn't hit uh, as it kind of is wriggling around from the, um, the impact on its leg. Uh, you you kind of miss with the shield, but v- Varga, you do notice that Molokov does go down with a shield strike. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Is that is that all you in? Uh, that'll be all I do for you. Is he still there? Uh, Actually, I, I might get a little bit out of the doorway, so I'm not so crowded. But yeah, sure. Um. Um. Ah, uh, yeah. So what I'm gonna do. Uh, is I want to, uh, I want to pick the knoll up from like the scruff. Yep. Um, yep. Toss them. Toss them into the into the dust. Just give me a, a strength uh, check. Sure. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. That is more than enough. So let's toss him. Um. Yeah, he's gonna go like to here as you just toss him wait. down and <laughs> falls down. Yeah. Uh, he's. Not dead, but he is he's gone out of consciousness yeah. from blood loss uh, and um, getting thrown in the dust. I'm going to look at the other one and just say, no, get the fuck out of here, you sacks of shit. Yep, they are both, they are both, oh, sorry, there's not one up by Puck anymore. Um, he, is, he is ready to tail it. Yeah, sure. Obak's just going to stand there and just kind of like sniff, yep. like uh, exhale through his nose and just like death stare, the one that's still standing. Yep. But it's not, uh, won't attack. And with... Uh, well, I don't know what the rest of you are doing. I'm just going to let him come grab his mate and fuck off. For sure. Um, Sweet. Ghost is up before them, though. So, Ghost, what would you like to do? <laughs> mm. Set the tone of the party. <laughs> <laughs> Where the hell are you going? And I um, will drop the crossbow, run... I just I have to try out all my things. Oh, yeah. oh for sure. Um, you also see this prone one down here. I wasn't paying attention to him. I was looking at the one who was running away. Yep, for sure. Um, I'm going to take a run 10 foot forward. Yep. Um, and as I do, I lift one heel up and pull a safety pin out of the back of my boot. And as I take the next stride, um, the steel uh, sort of leaf spring that was built into the base mm-hmm. of the boot kicks off. I'm casting jump. For yes. And giggle. <laughs> nice. Uh, sick. And I go flying about... Three. What, triple jump distance? So, 
almost 30 feet. Amazing. That's so cool, Michael. In front of this one. And then pivot round and pull out two light hammers from the back of my belt. <laughs> two light hammers? Yes. I love that. Um, <laughs> cool. The Noel is going to turn around to Vargir saying this to him. Um, you can tell that they're not super intelligent. Um, he's not going to yeah. get that you have offered his friend back to him. He thinks he's done for. Uh, he looks at Ghost, looks at you, um, and he's going to take his options by running up 25 feet. And then he's going to try and thread the needle through this way. <laughs> As he is, brr, 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 uh, puck, you're up. Good luck. Ah, uh, it's gonna whistle. <laughs> nice. And both myself and Swift Scale are gonna try and. I think Swift Scale is just gonna try and like knock, like run straight into him. Yep. Yep. Because like, I don't think he can attack, um, or whatever. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted to run into him basically, just like sure. Um, knock him down, like jump at him. Uh, just give me a strength yeah. a strength roll. Um, we'll work out the stats after this. Sure, sure, sure. So he's got stats. Yep. Um, give me a strength, so strength check then. Strength check would be a 13. 13 on a null. So it knocks him, but it doesn't... He keeps running. He uses the momentum. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So he'll be there. And then Puck is going to try and finish the job and he's going to try and i guess grapple okay sure um give me a strength check then yeah i'm, I'm very weak so this would be funny oh okay uh that's uh, just a straight 19 19 nice. uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna contest that one Seventeen plus two. That's a nineteen as well. So I'm gonna say you win that one. Uh, but he is he is ready to break out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but oh, you do well, have I'm a... barely, yeah, barely holding him down. Um, I, I'll call out a little help. Cool. Um, Hera, you hear this get shouted out? Guys, probably so you can probably pretty safely walk now soon. All we need. All my like jot down notes right now. Uh, what are the distances they need? What are the damages they're doing? How fast are they moving? <laughs> and so I will sort of go along and and see um, that he's has, has this guy taken any damage? Down on the ground. This guy up here. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 he took a hell of a hit just before. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. Um, and I'll just sort of, not even knowing, well, obviously knowing that he, he can't really hear me, I'll sort of just walk over and see him running and I'll pull out that little uh, cigarette holder, which is almost, and sort of almost pointed out like a wand. Oh, fuck yes. Whisper, the bells are chiming for you. And I'll flick the end of the wand as it sort of goes ding. Like a tuning fork? Yeah. Yes. But no one else can hear it. It just slowly gets louder and louder and louder. And I'll cast Toll the Dead. Yes, you so, will. Wisdom saving throw. Wisdom, you say? Did I say? Oh, that's an 11. Oh, that will fail. That will fail. Oh, that's going to be 10. Necrotic. Necrotic. Necrotic damage. That uh, is enough. As uh, Puck is holding on to him, uh, as the dinosaur you see swung round from the uh, the trough and knocked him, um, and you reach out as one flick it, and you hear them just kind of 
resonate down this this street uh and you see the knoll river and 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 bend uh as it tries to get out of uh puck's grasp but then it's rithering from the the sound of the dead claiming uh its last breath as it just goes limp in your arms puck and uh that takes us out of initiative um as this goes it goes limp Um, instantly I'm just going to walk up to Obek and, uh, kind of brush, brush his beautiful mane, uh, and cast Lay on Hands and just give it the five points that he's lost. Wonderful. Um, can you just, just describe this Lay on Hands a little bit? What is your, uh, yeah, what does your sure. magic look like? Uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of almost imagining it more like, um, uh, like it's kind of sp almost sporish. Okay. Uh, so 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 out of his like the out of like the pores of his hands comes this like kind of like earthy green malt um that kind of just like patches pa almost like mending like, yep. patches over with wounds and, and diseases and that yeah. I like it. Um he can regain those uh hit points. Beautiful. Um and then I'll just keep stroking him. Oh you told me I missed the entire fucking thing is this uh weird short little character with one leg currently standing a lot taller than the other yeah. bounced out spring yeah like bouncing like <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um jesus oh. um what, what's this fellow on the ground he, he's still like sort of writhing in pain with a broken leg oh like smashed leg you know but uh, had a shield come down right next to his face he's kind of like like he's he's unconscious for all mechanical purposes but you can tell that he's he's still alive yeah. Um suppose I'll just drop the shield to the ground. You guys see Molokov sort of whip the cloak back and for the first time see that mechanical arm, sort of this amalgamation of brass and steel, um, with sort of different different runes inscribed all the way up. Uh some of them even look like almost like a like a graffiti disc in high school some have been like crossed out and like new ones have been put in and, and like that sort of thing um and he just walks up to the to the knoll and just picks them up with one uh you know picks them up to like uh bring them up to eye level yep are you still breathing good at least have a talk eh? and i'll sort of drag him inside and shove him on a seat sure you shove him down and like barely breathing uh uh bleeding out you see everyone in the tavern kind of ooh, like gasps and kind of like either leaves or shuffles right to the other side. Um, you see Brackle uh, peering out from behind the door and kind of just like goes back, still staying in the back. Kind of everyone's leaving. You have the space inside now. Um, I don't mean to be I, I just want to know who he is. Seeing Molokov go inside with this, uh, with with the knoll, I'll probably follow. Copy that. Yeah, same. Leave O back to O back to do his thing. Sure, it moves back to the trough and just starts. <laughs> Happy as Larry. Happy as Larry. Love you, O back. I want to get the uh, what is his name? Bristle. Brackle. Brackle. Uh, I want to get him out, so I'm going to call him out when I go inside. Uh, Brackle. Oh, I'll be just, I'll be just, 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 just a second. I'm just uh, sorting one of the kegs back here. I'll be out soon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump over the bar. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, you go to the bar. I'm gonna try and drag him out. Go to the back room. There is no kegs back there. Um, he's just standing there looking for a way out. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, my, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, that's right. The, the kegs are on the outside of the the premises. So if you give me two seconds, I'll, I'll just go out and I'll just, just come out just come out here all right all right i'm not i'm not putting up a fight you, i'm gonna pull out my oh i'm wearing it but i'm gonna like flash in my signet ring oh dear oh dear that's um right wait, sir uh and he comes out and sits on a bar stool kind of like away from like he'll sit up here kind of thing click on the wrong map there you go he'll click <laughs> he'll sit up here um while the rest of you are kind of uh, 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 coming around here, I'm going to say this is the closest seat that you threw him on, Molokov. 
Uh, quick question. Uh, yeah. Is the girl around? Um, can't see her at the moment. Okay. Uh, yeah, cool. I, actually, I have a question for you for that. Yeah. Am I aware she's not? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 I'll just I'll just leave it then. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I, uh, I I would say maybe not aware of what, but you're aware of uh, that she is not real physical real. kind of yeah. thing. Sure. Cool. Uh, we'll unpack that later. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else is like, oh, cool, a vision. Yeah, like, um, just, just fuck it out, you guys. That sounds been, healthy. Been okay. reading uh, the, some Brandon Sanderson, it sounds like a sprint. <laughs> <laughs> All right. needs work fucking like, big, 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 big. Hey, uh, hey Drogan, it looks like the bears in here. Uh, you turn around, he's he's kind of disappeared. Got it. Uh, trust me not to be able to make any friends. All right, let's try again. Pick up my crossbow on the way. All right. Come inside. By this point, you're all walking inside. You've got a knoll sitting on the chair, unconscious. Um, and you kind of look around at each other, seeing you all kind of stand here as part of this fight. Uh, and the halfling has got a gnome on stilts sitting at the bar. I think we'd all want to know what happened here. Maybe, maybe this guy, pointing at the uh, the null. Oh. Maybe he can answer. Maybe you can answer. Oh, don't I'll let me get answer. away in the way of your interrogation. If you want to, I will sit here and watch. Right. You might be the uh, object of interrogation if you're not careful. Oh, you see him like go like pale white. Do they have anything to do with the fact that Callie isn't here? Why? In a way, yes. In what way? Uh, in a way that they, start, you... they. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. They uh, let me just. He seemed like pouring himself a drink of spirits as well, and just kind of. <laughs> they, they came through the other day. It's the rule, uh, R H. O-O-L. Rule. He... A local local bandit, you know, Lido, whatever you want to call him, he's just situated outside south of town. He's been causing a bit of fuss recently, and uh, Callie, she, uh... She thought she could have words with him. Uh, now, she clearly didn't deal with it as aggressively as you folk did, but they kind of overwhelmed her, and they took her away. My fear is, is that she's held up somewhere in their camp just south of town. I, uh, I stood, I stood up. I've been, I've been practicing under her for some time. Uh, I thought she would be back by now, but uh, I do fear the worst. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. If I, if I could get hold of this establishment, then I could make my way in life. But I also do want her back. I do swear. I'm not, I'm not trying to undermine her. Well, I think you've got a bit more apprenticing to do. I'll start listing off the things that I wrote down of like. There, you know, you know, every drink needs to come with a coaster. Uh, you've got <laughs> holes in the floor. Uh, you know, like just like all these, like all these things. I'm like, you are. Th this place is not up to standard. Oh my god. Oh, oh, by no means, it's up not up to standard. But uh, I, I was not the owner of this establishment, so you can't blame me. It's, it's almost long... like he, he's saying, like he's like, oh, I got you there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How long has Kelly been missing? Well, uh, it's been ten days now. I'm gonna just leave him drinking and shaking. I assume. Yep, and he, he <laughs> will. He, he down, will. And I'll come down to these guys and I'll say, uh, "Well, I need to speak to the person who owns this place. Is anyone interested in uh, coming with me to, to sort out, to see this thing through, and sort out this bandit leader?" Yeah, I think mm. sort of went to start interrogating the knoll and then probably just ears pricked up and would have just listened to that whole interaction you had. Um, I mean, it sounds like all the answers we need. I would like my drink first, though. You can have anything you want behind the bar. It's on him. Yes, absolutely. Oh. Anything you want. I'll take it as a loss on my behalf. Oh, wonderful. And 
Two Vulcans then. And what do you want, Hera? <laughs> and, uh, I, uh, I, I, nothing for me. Nothing. You see him then realize that you want him to get it, and he'll put, drink his spirit and then go behind the bar and start pouring two vodkas. So the last, while this has been going on, I kind of snuck in the corner of the door, um, found the first available chair, and stuck my foot up on it, and yep. it then you know, ending with it. <laughs> Put all the pieces back in place. Pull out a little um, uh, smaller notebook and just do, write a couple of things down, just listening to the conversation. For sure. Um, in response to Puck, uh, I'll say, um, I'd love to help, but uh, I've already actually been asked to do a job around here. Any of you know about a, about a beast? Not the, the one we saw outside? No, no. Some talks about a beast that can uh, freeze people on the spot and hunts from the shadows outside of town, stopping all these uh, stopping all these scavengers. Apparently, are uh, are you a scavenger? <laughs> <laughs> I I do what I need, and then I move on. I guess in some ways. I'll sort of try and make eye contact with Molotov and do the eyebrows thing. Sort <laughs> <laughs> of. <laughs> Look, I can help you find your uh, Kelly. You said her name was. I can help you find Kelly if you can help me with this uh, beast issue. That sounds well, like a fair uh, trade to me. I certainly do appreciate. Uh, all of you jumping to our aid. We are not used to uh, strangers helping us out. Hey, well, sometimes we need okay. to look out for each other. If you were heading into the Mornland later, then I see no problem with potentially dealing with this issue first. Yeah, I, uh, this... Oh, you go. I, uh, I, I don't mean to intrude, but... Uh... Tracking down a uh, missing person seems a little more, uh, uh, Michael can't think of words. <laughs> Pressing. A little, more, uh, a little more up to speed than, uh, he said, Hunts from the Shadows? Reasons people? Look, Might want to give that one some time. As much as uh, I'm, uh... Walk to the corner behind the bar and find the nearest available bottle of, um, something. It's on the house, right? Uh, yeah, it's all yours. You you take that if you want. Uh, don't let me stop you. Pop the cork and hop onto the bar and sit there dangling my legs off it. Sure. Sort of um, go to walk back outside and pick up my shield and I sort of just give a little t to um, here as I walk out. So link my way outside, sort of like lasers. Walking past, do the little turn in the, in the, like turn and sort of tuck out the door and, and sort of keep close to Molokov. I sort of, you know, quite slowly pick up the shield and just sort of give it a bit of a dust off and yeah, well, they seem like a likely bunch. Yes, they yeah. certainly can handle themselves. Not exactly, uh. Out of out of fact, um, expedition force that I was expecting that we were students out here, but you certainly seem better than some to uh, watch your back. Uh, yes, yes. And uh, the gnolls said they were collecting, but maybe they have artifacts at their camp. I, well, actually, good point. Um, the looks who knows what kind of taxes they have? Interesting things, uh, but I mean. May as well blend in. These guys uh, keep us safe. Not a bad thing. Agreed. Agreed. I'll sort of sling the shield over my shoulder and give you a nod and walk back in. I like to imagine that you guys walk back in and uh... Everyone else is just standing, staring at you. Yeah. That's, that's not a real door. It, it, that's yeah. like a saloon door. It's, it's a saloon door, and they've just heard this whole conversation. <laughs> <laughs> when the 
when they when they nip out, I'll probably turn to gesture towards Puck from sitting on the bar. Quite a, got quite a lot of uh, skill there. Well trained. I I have been trained, and I'll sort of like take notice of your boots for the first time. You're like, oh, he's actually not as tall as he thinks he is. And then I'll like <laughs> stand up a little bit straighter, but I'm still very short. <laughs> Uh, how I, I think how tall are you? You're cussing three foot as well. I'm like three three, I think. Yeah, we're we're the same height. I've just <laughs> um. Well, where, where... I I, uh, I think I ran past you in the in the street, but uh, your briefcase I, and 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 the jump, I, I that's nothing I can do. <laughs> uh, that's just a bit of creativity put into practice. Hardly a, hardly a well-trained arm skill like yourself. Yeah, he hearing hearing this conversation as well, I'll probably pipe in there and say, here's some uh, pretty neat tricks. And you have some pretty raw power. I, I saw what you did to that Noel's knee. Yeah, I feel bad for that. <laughs> right? Is it whimpers up on the seat? <laughs> oh. uh, as it does, <laughs> I'm going to get like, I'm going to get some just like, I don't know branches and shit out of my bag, or you know, and just kind of make a um makeshift. What is it called? Splint. Yeah, splint. Yep. Uh, for his leg, uh, while saying this isn't gonna heal nicely. I'll tell you that. Probably want to go get it checked by someone professional, but this is the best I can do, knowing full well I could probably fix it. <laughs> and and full well that he probably doesn't understand what going to a professional means as a thug. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Do you I think we need to? Do you think okay. we need him to tell us how to get there, or I'll turn around and call out? Does anyone else know where this camp is? That's actually a pretty good damn point. Well, it's your lucky day, my old friend. It kind of is. It's it's just kind of come back to consciousness now, and it it has been told that it needs to go see a professional. No idea what that means, uh, and it will go and go. Day lucky. I escape. No, you uh, live to fight another day. You're not Just dead. not fight us. No, As I say, no, it's... no fight, no fight. Um. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I'll ask it. Where's your camp? Uh, out of town. Uh, not far. Well, it'll be mighty kind of you to show us where it is. Kind of like points out the door. Yeah. Mighty kind. Look, if it looks like we're going on a walk, seems like he should too. That leg looks good. Yeah, I, can't, I can't walk on this. Yeah, R uh, rest. I need rest. Oh, that's fine. You won't be walking. Um, as I'm, I'm gonna like grab him, pick him up, and I want to kind of like tie him to one of the, like, like in between the two horns of the bison. So it's oh. kind of like just strung up. In between the horns of it. Yep. Um, yeah. That's yeah. That's what I want to do. Uh, Brackle will look on in horror as you string up this <laughs> knoll in, in front of this bison, and it goes. Uh, I, more, more of me at camp. I can't. I can't say they'll be nice. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm. I'm sure they won't be. But that's fine. We will. You'll be fine. Why do you? want to go i i go myself and i'll bring back gold treasure uh no i'm i'm you gotta talk to him about that as i'm gonna point to puck i'm just doing this for him you have someone i need to bring back oh bar owner lady yes yes mm. hope she's still alive i do too and uh i'm glad you said you hope it because i hope for your sake as well oh Oh, sweat, sweat, sweat. <laughs> well, is it going to take as long to get there? Uh, looks up like the sun's now kind of like late afternoon setting. Hours walk, couple of hours. Hmm. Well, I don't know uh, about the rest of you, but do you want to go today or do you want to go tomorrow? Yeah, well, it sounds like every minute she's there is not good for her, so... I rested on train. 
I could do a night's work. <laughs> Whatever gets us to the same if that was on distress. Just okay. another better, I reckon. Uh, Brackle will stand up from the bar. You, uh, you're not staying here tonight. I, I, I can have the place cleaned up for you by the morning. Uh, that's if you come back. Not that you do, you're not uh, capable of coming back. I uh, just, uh... That would be very kind. Thank you. Of course. Uh, do you know where you're going? He'll uh, take us. Unless you have any pointers. And I like, looks at the no. Let me, uh... For the sake of my, my health and our relationship going forward, uh, let me give you this. And he will pull out, uh, kind of, uh, from behind the bar, a map. Uh, it looks like a map of the area, uh, which I will now show you. <laughs> Your landing page. Yeah. Yes! It's loading. Oh my god. Loading. Very nice. <laughs> I oh, love that. Oh. That's awesome. A broken vacuum tube? That's great. <laughs> yes. So if that, that helps at all, then uh, please feel free to keep it. I will, uh, and thank you. I will remember that. Seems maybe this place isn't bereft of hospitality. Uh, no, no, we 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 don't uh, wear your sigil, but we're we're friends nonetheless. I uh, can tell you that. Lunching time. Lunching tower. Lurching. No, lurching. 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 Where do they point to? Sorry, where, where are we going? Uh, he hasn't pointed anywhere on the map because he doesn't know where you're going. The okay, right, knoll okay. has said it's south. Uh, okay. In the hills. Uh, I'm gonna jump on the back of my of Obak. Yep. Come on. And, uh, say to the rest, say to the gang. Well, may as well not waste time. Let's and go. Kinda, I'll just like do the whole like. Yep. Yeah. Let's start <laughs> sauntering off. Yeah. But um, I'd love to know your names. Seeing as we may be slightly and dying with each other today, friends call me Ghost, and my enemies, funnily enough. Um, my friends call me Puck, but Paxton is my full name. But it seems, uh, fights make for fast friends. You can call me Puck. Touche. I take a swing from the bottle and offer it towards you. So does a drink. Uh, name's Vagir. Uh, this is uh, Obek, as I give him a pat on the side. And uh, Tin's around here somewhere, but I don't know where she's going. Sure. Is she coming? A moment of silence, lol. <laughs> <laughs> is she uh, coming? Trying to remember if I saw her as a person earlier. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Is, is she is she a replace here? Uh can't see her. Okay. Uh um, um she's around. Do we wait? Very good. Uh, no, no, she'll find us. Would have had very suspicious sort of narrow eyes until everyone else revealed their names and then sort of look over here and and call me Molokov. Do you call That's yourself it. that too? I don't call myself anything. <laughs> Mighty curious. Who talks to themselves? What are you, crazy man? Maybe. You'll we'll find out. As he says, who talks to themselves? He's got to kind of like, kind of like, just like look away. And he'll sort of throw his cloak back over his over his shoulder and walk back outside. Uh, yes, I am, I am here. Uh, it's not short. Oh, well, it's... Well, it is short, but not for anything. Uh, I suppose I have friends, yes. <laughs> and enemies. Uh, 
So this is going to be a fun trip. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, nice to meet you all. Pleasure. Hey. So I turn to Mama Hubbard. It's quite strange folk in this town. Very strange. But very well, well. You're doing good. You guys have to work on your quiet voices. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to hop up into Swift, Swift Scale's saddle as well. And Oh, well, I guess if he's on yours, then you're leading the way, Vagir. All right. Uh, also, I'm going to admire your, your mount. I won't say anything. I'll just stare. I'll just be like, mm, that's fucking awesome. That's a nice folder. Well, like quite a, quite impressive, even if it is smaller than uh, um, Obuk. And you think that if you got on this mount, it would maybe collapse under your weight. Yeah, uh, yeah that's fair. Being a halfling on a medium mount is uh, different than you being on a large yes. mount. <laughs> yeah. But as you sling your bags over your shoulders uh, and your first impressions of uh, Vatherond have set in as you set out of town, as the sun starts to set over the red sands, uh, trying to find a woman named Callie as you have banded together with other Outback adventurers. Uh, we will end the session there, the session one of the new campaign. Yeah. On nice. To the Knoll's hideout. We're back, baby. We're back. So good. Ooh, wait.